internet. Well, look where I am. This is Fanshawe Lake. And this is just, just outside of London, Ontario, Canada. So on that topic, the subject of today's video is Canada. Um, as you all know by now, we leave Arizona this time of year for several months. And uh, I'll uh, bring up some video here for you to show you why. Right, that. <laughs> so um, I kind of joke with people that we're sort of modern climate refugees. Uh, we tend to leave because it just becomes almost uninhabitable in uh, Phoenix. So uh, we've been meaning to come up here to Canada for several years now. And um, specifically because we have some family and uh, COVID kind of messed that up for a couple of years, blew us out of the water, but we finally got off our butts and did it this year. And so here we are. And uh, so I'll bring you a number of adventures in this episode. I'll take you around the Fanshawe Lake mountain bike trail, which goes around the perimeter of the lake. And uh, we're gonna see a train, Central, the Waterloo Central Railroad, they call it. And I'll take you to Bowler Mountain Mountain Biking Park. And we're also gonna do some fun out at um, Niagara Falls, I've never been. Uh, the trip itself was, was fine. It took us about five days, uh, roughly six to seven hours a day. Um, so we, uh, we left Arizona, um, stayed in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and then we headed from New Mexico through um, Texas, and then uh, in Oklahoma, stayed there at, uh, uh, it's called uh, uh, Elk City. And then we um, headed out uh, again and um, stayed uh, right after Oklahoma we, we made it into Missouri and stayed not too far out of St. Louis and that was my plan so that we would make it through St. Louis with um, no traffic that worked out beautifully and then after uh, after St. Louis we made our way up to uh, Fort Wayne Indiana and uh, finally uh, over to um, through Ohio and then Michigan to the Blue Water Bay Bridge and crossed over into Canada. Uh, I would give you a better video of that. They uh, lots of signs they don't want people taking video, so go figure. But um, I uh, knocked myself out trying to prepare. I had uh, all my vaccination forms and our passports and our driver's licenses and our rabies certificates for the pups, and um, we didn't have any uh, fresh fruits or vegetables and. Uh, none of that mattered. They just asked us uh, if we had any, uh, I think it was any weapons, and I said no. And um, they asked, oh, and they asked if we had alcohol. And I said, I have um, a tiny little, maybe a sixth of a jar of moonshine. And they said, okay, move on. So, so uh, it was an easy crossing. And, and then we made our way over here to uh, Ontario. So, a um, little couple of just uh, funny little notes for me as an American, uh, first time really being in Canada. Um, so everything here is metric, so uh, my truck does have a software mode where you can change it to metric, and I did so. Um, so uh, obeying the speed limit was easy, but what I didn't realize it would do is a side effect was, uh, um, yeah, the, uh, uh, the temperature system is now in uh, Celsius, and um, the navigation system is in meters. <laughs> so, so my truck tells me, turn right in 1,500 meters, and I'm like, uh, uh, oh, okay, will do. Um, so, but it's been just fine. Um, fuel costs are no worse here than they were in the States, uh, roughly, roughly $2 a liter. So, um, that's Canadian dollars and, um, American, uh, to Canadian exchange, I believe is a dollar 30 to the Canadian dollar. So once you work out all the math, uh, the prices are virtually identical here. So, um, and, uh, last thing, um, right before our trip, I did log into my bank and to both of my uh, credit card accounts and went to go tell them that I was going to be taking a trip and um, they all say stuff like this like uh, yeah don't bother uh, we've got good technology now we can tell if um, there's anything going on so I didn't have to do anything there and then uh, final note um, just a last little word about advertising um, so I uh, have uh, two accounts, I have a Verizon account and an AT&T account. The Verizon is our primary, then I use AT&T for fallback for connectivity and 
Um, so Verizon said, uh, uh, yeah, you, your plan will work there, um, no extra charges. And they assured me that my data would work too. And then as soon as I crossed into Canada, I got this, uh, this little note, this nice little note from them. So, um, which is, uh, yeah, enjoy a half gig a day. I can't even browse the internet in the morning reading the news on a half gig. So uh, fortunately I predicted this uh, because I don't trust almost anything. And uh, so I had already arranged to um, travel here uh, and um, go over to our family's house for uh, work days. So they have high speed internet and it's worked just fine. All right, let's get this adventure started. Okay, we're here at the farmer's market stop for the Waterloo Railroad. There's the farmer's market yonder and a teeny, teeny, tiny little depot. Waterloo Central Railway. First class. First class, guys. be a short and then there'll be one more long and that's rule 14 L of third. original Grand Trunk Railway Station from Elmira.
This is the Fanshawe Lake Trail. This is one of the places I've been mountain biking since we've been here in Canada. It goes for, I'd say roughly 20 kilometers or 12 miles to do the full lake. Um, for the most part, it's a green. I would say that uh, for anybody like me that's a desert rat, the uh, wet route riding can be a little treacherous. And the rain here has been outrageous. I've seen, I've just never seen anything like it, of course, coming from the desert. Another oddity of this trail I've never encountered before is the direction changes daily, even dates are clockwise. And so this stuff looks innocuous, it's very easy until it's wet. The regular trail is marked by these little hiker guys. Evidently, laneways are what Canadians call driveways. Alright, so the trail picks up right here again. Fanshawe Lake Trail. Alright, well this is... where the trail turns into uh, quite a bit of pavement. Back on the trail, north side. This trail does have a couple of punchy climbs, so they actually do do get a little elevation out of it. The north side does seem a little more shaded. Also a little muddier, but today it's great. Sleepy Hollow, anybody? Ooh, creepy. We are at Boulder Mountain, and this is a map of the mountain bike trail. So uh, the way that these trails are laid out is um, there's a continuous loop. And there's two ways up. There's kind of the easy way and the slightly harder way. Um, and then there are these signs that um, the yellow path is sort of the slightly easier and the black is the slightly harder.
fire, yeah, we were built to drive, yeah. I think that we've all had enough. What keeps you up at night, yeah? Make all the demons quiet, yeah. We were built to drive, yeah. Cruising in my lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah, I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, nah, f likely. I be taking shots, yeah, cold blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know how to ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running sh right, see. And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane, making pleasure out of pain, uh. Turning losses into gains, I'm the boss, I'm making change, I've been rocking this exchange, uh Popping off and risking things, gonna make a f***ing name, I just wanna be famous But I don't want that cheap fame, no I'm not that vain, I just wanna be greatness Going off every chance I get I don't really take a loss, well, I'll admit That's why I'll make it to the top, yeah, I commit And no, I'm never getting lost, I get after it Investing in my own stock, cause it's faster than Any crypto hits go, let me spend Everything that you see is something I invent And it's only a percent I'm gonna take shots if I miss all, forget it I'll take a fat loss just to learn all that's in it I'm taking snapshots, learning how to fall and get it I'm getting back up, always stand tall, don't sweat it I never back up, I don't miss a thing or regret it I'm always learning, you could call me academic I'm always working, never been apathetic That energy is like a poison, needs a man, a septic <laughs> Insert a little vice in You don't have to love me You don't have to like me Got enough love in myself
there is the meat last year. Oh, not really. best seating ever. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that freaking view. Jeez, look at this. That's how they built the tunnels. We are under Horseshoe Falls in Canada, we've hiked one third of the way across the falls underground. Look at that. And somebody went over these falls. This is the beginning of the Horseshoe Falls. That's the American side over there. Oh, it's lovely. Six freaking cables. <laughs> and then we go up on the chairlift on one, you know.
Hopefully he stops here for like 10, 15 seconds. Does that, oh, just brace yourself. Sorry. Just brace yourself as we go back to our stop. You don't have to keep going in. You're good. So while we're up here, you may have noticed in the small tunnel behind us now, that large silver bucket looking thing. Uh, that would be our rescue car, and that'd be one of the things you can do. All these I mean, look at, I mean, look at all the eddies and screens. That's what I was saying, yeah. It's on the yeah. yeah, I find this little fact a bit uninteresting. Maybe it's a bit scary for others. But it's, hypothetically, if we were to stop like, right here with this amount of many people on the car, uh, and we had to use a rescue car, the rescue car only holds four people plus an operator. It would take about almost like probably nine to ten hours just to get everybody off just from here because we have to get the rescue car all set up and bring it all the way over here just to get four people and bring it all the way back and just keep doing that as it falls. It takes a really long time to get the rescue car to move this way and to move back. Car. I also noticed on my whirlpool aero car. In the middle of the whirlpool, it is 126 feet deep. The whirlpool is so strong that it can hold a pretty happy tree stump at the bottom of the whirlpool for just over a month and a half. And now you'll notice it doesn't have a stereotypical. They say this is 126 feet deep. That's because of the flow of water going through it and not getting any again. Now, what I mean by that uh, is between the hours of midnight and 8 a.m., the city of Niagara Falls will take majority of the flow of the water from the Bumper Falls and bring it to the hydroelectric generating station to create power. Uh, so in that eight-hour downtime, the whirlpool will actually drop about 20 feet down. Wow. It'll start turning in a clockwise direction rather than a counterclockwise direction. Wow. That's crazy, eh? And to add to that, you'll notice a little okay. green tinge to the water. That is from the limestone and the rocks that build up this river. Oh, wow. Now, we're not like Chicago during St. Patrick's Day, but like green food dying in, in the river. And thank you guys for riding with me here on the Whirlpool Aero Car. Thank you. It was a nice rescue trip here in Niagara Falls. There will be another slight bump as we go back to our stock and we'll be exiting on the left.